with its beauty and grace and strength. May this flaming chalice remind us of our highest aspirations, our deepest commitments, and our most earnest intentions. Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church in Surprise, Arizona. I'm Bonnie Saunders. In the words of the Reverend Dr. Nathaniel P. Laureate, my UU minister in the UU Church in Hartford, Connecticut, and the first full-time settled minister at this church, quote, to affirm faith without dishonesty, magic, or mere traditionalism is our basic witness. To enjoy and serve is our daily life. To advance the unfettered search for truth and uphold the worth and rights of all human persons is our endless effort." Unquote. As most of you know, I am a historian so I'm very much interested in the history of this church. At one of the recent men's club meetings, people talked about how they did not know about the history of the church and couldn't someone explain things like that to them. They talked about uh, um, uh, doing something online or with PowerPoint or something like that. But I said, well, I enjoy talking and enjoy reading and writing. So for my sermons this summer, my two sermons, I will talk about uh, the history of the church. Today, we will talk about, I will talk about the first 20 years, 1975 to 1995. This talk is based on a history 
of Unitarian Universalist Church in the Sun Cities from September 1975 to September 1995, written by Doris Melanie, later Doris Thompson. Even though I joined the church in December 1998, there was still a lot of the early members of the church who were still active and whom I knew. I'll note some of them as I go along. Next week, I will talk about the church's second 20 years, 1995 to 2015, based on two additional histories. Both of the, all of the three of these histories are in the library. Uh, meetings and meeting places, the first 10 years, is the topic of this next section. After about three years of periodic informal meetings, a group of about 10 Sun City and Sun City West religious liberals met in May 1975 to organize their religious liberal effort. 32 people attended the first formal organization and religious service on Sunday, September 7th that year. They met at the Heritage Funeral Home in Youngstown. Their goals were to stimulate the mind, to create fellowship of like-minded liberal religious people, and to learn about and act to improve the environment. During the first year, church members wrote bylaws, achieved formal certification from the UUA of acceptance as a full-fledged UU fellowship, formed working committees to do the work of the church, voted in, on a budget, and set up financial procedures, created a membership committee to increase the size of the church, to welcome visitors, and to follow their visits with telephone chats. Membership grew quickly to 62 members by the end of the church year. Members enjoyed listening to various other members of the church speak. Uh, there, was a variety, there was a variety of topics, along with a few visiting ministers and out, well, outside lay speakers. Members formed other committees, including programs to choose topics for talks and discussions a PR to make sure the UU voice was heard in the wider community, social concerns to learn about and act on various local and national social problems, social activities to hold luncheons and potluck suppers at members' homes in order for members to bond, and music to choose appropriate songs for services. That was all in the first year. In 1994, several of the earliest members were interviewed and they expressed strong satisfaction with their experiences in the early church. Its friendliness, spirit, philosophy, growth, leadership, and speakers. They praised the liberal message and wished it could reach more people in the highly conservative Sun Cities. They did express the concern that church members should be more attentive to ill and homebound or nursing home members. In 1977, the church lost its right to meet at the Heritage Funeral Chapel. For several weeks, members met at two banquet halls of a Mexican restaurant and a hotel, both in Peoria. Finally, from September 1977 to September 1980, they met in another funeral chapel in Sun City, albeit one without meeting and social facilities. For social events, they met at members' homes after church and for potluck suppers. Members began to want a church home, and the search began. 
1978, the church was incorporated as a nonprofit organization. Finances were sound. Membership grew to more than 100. More professional speakers improved Sunday services. New offerings established that year were a friendship committee to visit the sick to attend and to attend memorial services, to reach out in sympathy to surviving spouses, to welcome new members, and to set up formal and informal get-togethers. They also established a historian, a bridge group, a discussion group, and a news bulletin to keep members informed about other members' activities, accomplishments, illnesses, and deaths. Some UUs mentioned from the 1970s, whom I actually met, were Helen Drummond and Bernice Lieber, who worked on the music committee, and Bill Thompson, whose work ranged from treasurer to president during the 1970s. Bill was a member for the first 15 or so years that I was a member. I also remember Dr. James Baker, who was president for several years in the 1970s and 1980s, and later a choir member and sculptor. Doris Melanie, who married Bill Thompson in the 1990s, also served as president for a couple of years, and I knew her well. The 1980s was a time of great improvement in many areas. By late 1980, UU members began to meet for services discussions, and social events at the Masonic Fellowship Temple in Sun City, finally a facility with space for social activities. In 1981, the church hired a, a part-time, a half-time minister, Dr. Glenn Bumstadt, an adjunct at ASU, who, alas, lived 50 miles away in Mesa. He did continue as part-time minister until 1985. The first real choir began in 1982, the same year the library started. Two new discussion groups started on the topics of the great books and on philosophy and theology. In a bylaw change in 1982, the UU Fellowship of the Sun Cities became the UU Church of the Sun Cities, a movement of maturity that raised the status of the church in the community. The Women's Alliance was formed in 1984, providing discussions, programs, and service to church members and the wider community until it was disbanded in 2010. More on that next week. I knew several people who were active in the 1980s. Richard Brown, who was totally blind and who volunteered to be president for one year, and his wife Adele, who was nearly blind and was active in many roles, serving refreshments, entertaining, speaking, promoting social causes, in short, major helpers. Richard wrote music and poems, played bridge well, and often regaled members by playing his own songs on his guitar. I also remember Dr. James Baker, sculptor and choir member, Elsie and Michael Irvin, who were also active, Doris Melanie and Bill Thompson, who were married in the 1990s, Art and Mary Helen Wickman. Mary Helen Wickman began the metaphysical group. Ruth Gadotti, who was present at our first shared Thanksgiving dinner at the home of Maisie Lauderdale in 1998. Helen Jones, Rhea Anderson, Connie Bindrup, I knew her as a choir member, Ruth Pembleton, Alan Powell, Doris Foster, Erie Again, Lloyd and Lou Ann Blair. He was a choir member and she was involved in membership and the Alliance. 
I have fond memories of all of these people. In 1985, there was a crossroads, a new member and a new church. I knew a few other members of the 1990s. This is now from 85, 1985 to 1995. Professional artist, Ruth Stoloff, who was uh, uh, Doris Melanie's sister. Alan Powell, who was president for quite a few years. Ruth Pendleton. Richard and Nancy Bechtel, both of whom served as president for a few years. Dorothy Johnson, Betty Prince, Helen Jones, Dory West, by the time I knew her, she had married Bill Connor, Barbara Bowling, Irene Oleski, Millie Steer, Ray Prendergast, Mickey Ogden, Helen LaRose, Joe Brooks, Mary Wiley, Maisie Lauderdale, Vivian Wood, Betty Roberts, Maxine Peterson, Pat Jolly, and harpist, beautifully played, Kay Carkery. Um, four or so people of those, that number are still alive. Most of them have passed on. In the fall of 1983, church members decided that they needed a full-time settled minister. The ministerial search committee prepared a portfolio containing a history of the church, the demographic and cultural analysis of the Sun Cities, budgets, bylaws, and results of a congregational questionnaire on what members of the church wanted in a full-time settled minister. In 1985, based on the research of the Ministerial Search Committee, the church called the Reverend Dr. Nathaniel P. Laureate, who was called Nat by his parishioners, to be the UU Church of the Sun City's first full-time settled minister. He had been a UU minister for 40 years, 20 of them at the large UU Church in Hartford, Connecticut, which I attended. As a matter of fact, he had been my minister of that church since the fall of 1980. His move to Arizona was a blow to that church, but a boon to this one. He was searching for a less demanding assignment before retirement and a better climate for his wife, Jane, one of my favorite people in the Hartford Church, who had severe arthritis. He was installed in January 1986. While Nat was minister, Dr. Jim Baker sculpted his bust, which is in the social hall now. So next time you get to church, look for it. By the way, my first attendance at this church was late September 1998. Yes, who was it in the pulpit that day? Yes, Nat Laureate. What a good omen. The congregation held Nat in high esteem, finding him an outstanding minister, a compassionate pastor, a scholar, well-versed in history, literature, and religion, a delightful man of humor, true friendliness and integrity, and the instigator of celebrations of life instead of funeral services. During his tenure as minister, the number of members and visitors skyrocketed. By 1990, there were 161 members. Nat's ministry was outstanding in all respects. He provided a deeper sense of religious inspiration and commitment and encouraged membership increase and personal involvement in the church and in the wider community. He increased the respect of the UU church in the community. I had known Jane Laureate since early 1978 when we worked together on a model United Nations for high school students. She had been president of the International Association of Liberal Religious Women she made her mark in Sun City as the minister's wife, 
despite her arthritis pain. She was a student of history and literature who could write and direct delightful historical plays for the congregation. She also knew a lot about art and art history, which led her to give talks and to chair the docent program in the Sun City's Art Museum. Other talented members included poets, art historians, playwrights, sculptors, a songwriter, musicians, and a professional artist. Several members won national awards for poetry. In 1993, Mordecai Roth sculpted a flaming chalice in memory of Connie Mendrop's daughter. The flaming chalice is the symbol for UUism, and many churches have one. Later, he sculpted many, many other flaming chalices, including the one that we light each week, and you see a picture of uh, on your screen. He also sculpted many others, which grace many other UU churches all over America. He was honored for his chalices at the UUA General Assembly in Phoenix in 2012. His photo is also on the wall of the social hall. In 1990, the UU Church bought and renovated an empty bank building at the corner of 99th Avenue and Union Hills Drive. The first service at that location was held on February 4th. The members often said this was the first service in our own church home. Its dedication was in October 1990. Members donated kitchen utensils, equipment, and furniture. One member who moved away donated the entire contents of her Sun City home to be used or sold as appropriate. <coughs> Activities continued. Discussion of philosophy and theology, current events, social concerns, inquirers meetings, UU history in America. The church was open for use by like-minded groups, such as the local League of Women Voters and the local chapter of the United Nations Association. Members formed a new group, Writing Your Life History, whose biographies remain in our library today. The Alliance continued to visit, meet monthly and collect clothing and household items for the benefit of Adelante Campesino, an organization in surprise that helped largely destitute migrant Mexican workers. The first half of the 1990s saw an increase in membership, the beautification of the church building, the addition of many activities and discussion topics, better music, increased use of the library, growing interest in the origins of Unitarianism in Transylvania in the 16th century. King John Sigismund allowed freedom of religion no matter what people believed. And in the 16th century, that was otherwise unheard of. His decree lasted about 20 years until his death and the return of religious intolerance in Transylvania. Ruth Stoloff, professional artist and sister of Doris Melanie, whom I knew, uh, gave artwork to the church in 1990. In 1995, his, the 50th year of his ministry and his 10th year as minister of this church, Nat Laureate retired as the church's first full-time settled minister. But he remained minister emeritus, which brought him to the church for one sermon per year, including my first attendance at this church. Both, both Nat and Jane were honored in March, and they moved to Sedona in June. Alas, Jane's arthritis had not improved in the dry climate in Arizona, and she died in August. The church selected the Reverend Oren Peterson as interim minister. Interestingly enough, the Reverend Peterson had been the settled minister at my mother-in-law's church 
in Duxbury, Massachusetts, and he had presided at the naming ceremony of our two daughters in 1974. By the fall of 1995, there were more than 200 members of the UU Church. Members met in a mortgage-free building. Their long-range goals were a quality full-time replacement for Nat Laureate, increased membership, better music, more professionals working as secretaries and custodians, possible year-round services, and outreach, outreach to the other UU churches in the Phoenix area. Next Sunday, I will talk about the next 20 years, 1995 to 2005, from a history by Nancy Bechtel in 2005, and a history that I wrote about the years 2005 to 2015. I wrote it in 2015. That sermon is a little longer because the church was much more active in that 20 year period. So come and hear the rest of our history. Blessed be. I travel and the earth is my blue 